Okay, we are live, yes. Let's just give it a minute to see, give people an opportunity to join and then we will get started. Yay. <laughs> we are live. Yay. Now I want to, now I want to be outside, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful sky. <laughs> I'm on like a plantation. It's actually really nice. Really? Yeah. I love those type of places. I got married on, a, on an estate in Tarrytown, overlooking the Hudson River. Oh, cool. And where am I? I'm in Weatherford, Texas, I think. We are live. Yes. Technology is great. I love it. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. Why don't we get started? So welcome to the, first, the Genesis Audio Tech and Design Facebook Live event. Tonight's topic is smart home automation. I'm Risa Schultz and I'm joined by Allison Lopez and we're from We Connect, and we're gonna be moderating tonight's conversation. We're excited to be joined by a panel of industry experts. I'm gonna ask each of you to introduce yourself. Tell us your name, your company and a little bit about what you do. So John, why don't you go first? Uh, my name is John Centers. I'm the president of Genesis Audio. Uh, we're a home automation and home entertainment uh, store located in Columbus, Ohio. Um, actually, we're located in Gahanna, which is on the east east side of Columbus, and uh, we've been in business since 1997, um, doing home automation, smart home design, home theater, um, and then of course, you know, just regular two channel audio and and musical things of that. Great, Hayden. Why don't you go next? Yeah, I'm Hayden Piles with Bob Webb Homes, and uh, Bob Webb Homes is. Uh, we're, our main headquarters is, is in Lewis Center, Ohio, um, but we primarily, we build in, in Olentangy schools, Dublin schools, and Worthington, kind of all over, um, and we've been around since 1960. We really pride ourselves on the custom aspect, um, but it's, it's also about the quality and, and how we build the homes, um, and we really kind of take the time to walk our clients through what, kind of what we do differently compared to other builders and uh, really want to educate clients. So my job at Bob Webb, I am a uh, new home consultant. So what that means is, is I walk clients through the process from day one all the way until you move in. And even after you move in, I'm, I'm still in touch with everybody um, throughout the whole process just to make sure everything is, is working well. Um, and it's, it's a great company. We do a lot of really cool things and and I'm uh, located in one of our show homes that you uh, will see later. Oh, great. Danny, why don't you go next? I'm Danny Russo from Columbus, Ohio. I'm an interior designer. I'm a member of the American Society of Interior Design, and I've been in design for about 20 years. Uh, next year, I'll be having my own TV show come out called Danny Does Design, and I travel the nation helping people um, select their finishes for their home create unique spaces and select great furniture. And we do a lot of bathroom and kitchen renovations as well. Great, and Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Wheeler. I'm the territory sales manager for Control 4 for Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, upstate New York and West Virginia. And I work with companies like John to help them integrate technology into people's homes. Great, well, we're so excited to have you as part of our conversation tonight. So thank you all for being with us. Um, if you're watching at home, feel free to leave comments or questions in the chat and we'll get to those towards the end of our conversation. So let's get started. John, there are so many smart home um, levels in the market today. So for example, somebody may think that they have a Ring doorbell or an Alexa, and that's really like the first entry level of smart home. Then the next level would be um, if they had an Alexa and they integrated it with a lighting system or a whole home audio system, tell us what a truly and fully integrated smart home is. Well, a truly integrated smart home is intelligent. Um, it, it's not just a matter of opening up an app and turning on a light. It's knowing if there's somebody in the room and having the, the light react to that. Um, you know, you can you can go get a thermostat from Home Depot and you can put it on the wall and you can control it from your phone. But with, a, with an intelligent home, it can let you know if it hasn't satisfied the, if you're calling for, for cool, for example, and, 
in June and you got the air conditioner set at, at 68. Well, it's been running for seven hours and it's 74 degrees. Your thermostat that you buy from Home Depot can't tell you that there's a problem. Well, can, you know, with, with the system that we do with Control 4, I can send you a text message saying that the furnace has been running for four hours and hasn't satisfied the thermostat. You might want to contact a technician. Um, or there, there's so many different parts to it. A, a home needs to be intelligent, not just smart. I think a lot of it comes from artificial intelligence and augmented reality where our wired devices are learning from us um, and they're learning our habits. And I believe when you integrate Control 4 into your home, you have the ability to have these, each component, each layer that you're speaking of, uh, start learning your habits and learning your routine and adjusting to them. Um, I think one of the easier questions to answer is, what can't home automation do? I mean, there, there's so many things that's it's changing daily. And it's one of those things where you don't know you need it until you have it. Exactly. No, and I think know. the good thing about Control 4, sorry for interrupting, but the good thing about Control 4, it's almost, it, Control 4 is doing for the home what the iPhone did for the uh, cellular telephone industry. And we have this, iPhone that really re technically has not changed since the day it came out. It's a flat screen and you have X amount of apps and the design of it really has not changed at all, even though we're on the iPhone 12. But when you have a control for system, you're able to upgrade as you go along without having to get new equipment all the time. That's just my it opinion. grows with you. You know, the, the system, it, it's not a, it, that's what's nice about it. That's what I, that's what I, you know, fell in love with is that, when the, when the next model comes out or the next greatest thing comes out, it doesn't mean you have to throw away everything you bought and go buy new. You right. know, it, it can continue to grow and, 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 and excel in, in the environment. Right. So we, so we know that every great smart home, especially when a fully integrated smart home, has to be built on a network, right? So you know, it all starts with the framework. It starts with the network. And it starts with something we call pre-wire in our industry. And so, you know, Bob Webb Homes, Hayden, you're from Bob Webb Homes. I know you're a premier builder in the market and I know you're using Control 4. Can you talk to us about the foundation that you guys build with pre-wiring to lay Control 4 over? And then yeah. I know you're in a model, you can kind of show us, show us a little bit about what's going on with it. Exactly, so you're gonna make me get up, but that's fine. <laughs> um, so it's, it's so important as you go through the design process. I mean, that's a Bob Webb. We, we have that luxury really to design the house with the pre-wiring. I mean, obviously we're building the home and so it's great. Um, because we're a lot of our, our process involves the upfront, the, the thinking about how you're going to live in the home, how you're going to use it. And the home automation is one of those many aspects. It's an important aspect, but it, it, it's one of those many aspects. And we, we really want to discover how people live their lives. And um, us doing this many, many times, obviously, we want to suggest how, how people can use the home. And a lot of people don't think of, of little items like um, we, we build on um, all kinds of lots. And a lot of times people will come to me and they say, you know, I want a flat lot Hayden because I don't want a walkout lot, meaning in the basement you can physically walk out because that's another point for entry. That's a, a point for someone to come in. I mean, for, for privacy, for security, that's an issue. Um, it also happens to be a point where people can get out um, if you have, you know, teenagers or <laughs> anything like that. Um, so that's where it, their, their, their concerns kind of go away when you talk about, well, you know, we have cameras, you know, we have glass sensors, we, you know, you have all this stuff that you can integrate with your home. And that kind of eliminates what the possibilities could be. Um, and so that's where it's, it's, it's very important to plan for stuff like that, where they may go towards a lot that they, that they thought was ruled out because of that. Um, so once clients figure out the lot, then obviously the home, you, you've got to think about how you're going to live in, in the home. 
tall ceilings are huge now. Uh, I, I know the older homes are a little bit shorter ceilings, but the tall ceilings make you feel a lot more open and, and not closed in. And so you have those, those tall, high windows that can be an issue in the later afternoon when the sun is coming in and it's, you're trying to watch you know, the, the, the baseball game or whatever it may be, watching TV, and that sun is right on that TV. That, that glare is <laughs> terrible. Um, and so with these tall windows, you, you really don't have that ability to shut blinds um, manually. But with home automation, you can do that very, very easily. Um, so what I'll do is I, I will, I'll show you. I am in, in our show home. So I'll kind of do a quick pan of this home that I'm in. Beautiful. Lots of stuff that you can do. But I wanted to show you one thing that is the blinds. Again, this is one aspect of many in this home. In this home, you can control the lights, you can control the music, you can control the actual alarm, and it's all done through my phone or even my voice. Um, I have that disabled right now because I don't want to say the wrong <laughs> word. But the, the, the actual app, which is the Control 4 app, we love it. It's very, um, it's very easy to use. And so I don't know if you can probably, it's probably backwards, but this is my phone. I have the blinds that are pulled up in this home. So all I do is I take this bar, this is in the great room. I slide it to however far down I wanna make it go. And if you can see back behind me, that one blind is going down. Awesome. Obviously that's Love a it. quick illustration, but you Love can- Love it, thank you, thank you so much for showing us that, I love it. Well, it's so so Catherine, I, see, I see Catherine, and big smiles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, they're doing a great job of selling Control 4, no, I can just sit there. That, that's what I was yeah. just gonna say, I say, you know, you, you're from Control 4 and you live this every single day. But one of the questions that I wanted we wanted to ask you or talk to you about was we know Control 4 believes in ecosystems and building ecosystems and building from the ground up. You don't have to start with a full blown, fully automated system, you know, with lights, um, security, shades, and all of the things I'm sure Bob Webb Homes have in it. Um, you just recently released the Chime video doorbell. And I read somewhere along the line that um, Control 4 integrates with over 400 other products out there. Talk to us a little bit about your ecosystem and about the building blocks, basically. Yeah, so kind of in addition to what these guys have been saying, they're completely scalable systems. So you don't have to buy into everything up front, which I think is kind of a fear for most people. They think smart home and they get really intimidated. But it isn't like that. So you can work with your builder, your AV integrator, your interior designer to pick and choose the parts and pieces that are important to you in the beginning. And maybe that's just lights and shades, which are super popular. Uh, and then you want to add audio or you want to add a video doorbell onto it. And you can do that with the existing infrastructure. And if when you're in the design process with your builder, you wire for all of those things ahead of time, it's really easy for John and his team at Genesis to go in and add those additional parts and pieces when you want to further down the line. And as new technology comes out, you can upgrade with that as you go. Uh, and we do communicate with other third-party devices, things we don't make, uh, like the word that I can't say because my, but to do uh, voice commands and things like that. So all of that will integrate. Say the word. Start with an A and end with an X. Yeah, she knows in my house, she'll, the lights will go off and we'll have a problem. Alexa, Alexa. <laughs> so. I better not say mine too <laughs> loudly. The music will start playing if we say it. Don't do it here. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's that's the idea behind it so that it can grow with your family as your family expands and more people live there. And the benefit to it all is that every little part and piece of your home is easily controlled from one place. So either your phone or a remote or a touch screen on the wall or your iPad or your computer, whatever that may be, uh, you have visible you have visibility for from everything remotely or when you're at home and everything works together. So kind of to Hayden's point, uh, when he's talking about lowering the shades because the sunlight comes in, Control 4 actually has a client that works with the weather channel. So it can get the weather and it can see if it's sunny outside or if it's cloudy and if it's an east facing window or a west facing window and do that automatically based on what, what's happening. So there are a lot of little things that can happen. Yeah, I love the whole idea. I love the whole idea about personalization. John, can you talk to us about how you personalize a smart home 
when you first sit with a client, what are kind of the things you're going through and how can you personalize? I know Control 4 has the Neo remote, you know, beautiful touchscreen remote. Um, that's just one small part of how you can personalize. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of like what Hayden was saying, when, when you sit down and you ask the customer or the, the, you ask them what it is, how do they live their life? What's important to them? Is it music? Is it video? Is it making sure that you, you keep an eye on the kids? Um, by, by doing all of that. Um, I would think security would be a big thing. Security and how a client lives. Do you sleep hot? Do you, do you, do you like to sleep when it's cooler so your system can adjust to be hot or cold? Um, yeah, exactly. Are you in a routine where you want to watch Good Morning America or Today Show every morning and the TV turns on with that channel on? Uh, well, Danny, we know you have control for in your own house. Tell us how you use it. I use it for just things like that. Um, <laughs> we have it. It controls my blinds. Um, it controls all of my TVs. Uh, controls my thermostat. It's nice that I can look at it like I'm in Texas right now, but I can look at I can turn on my control four and see what's happening with the temperature at the house. Uh, sometimes if somebody in the home makes me mad um, and I'm not there, I might turn the heat up when it's 80 degrees outside to pull a joke or maybe <laughs> turn the air conditioner on when it's cold. But <laughs> I'm not saying I've ever done that, <laughs> but it's yeah, nice yeah. that I can log in and I can see what my dog is doing. Um, I could see, I, I know what's going on. I can tell who's opened the front door uh, stuff like that. I can tell my cleaning ladies has, has come in. Um, iRobot just came out with a new uh, robot. I could, I know that they have an app. I don't know if it's integrated with Control 4, but I can, I'm sure that it can be, but I can see when the house has been cleaned by the robot. But well, like I, said, I mean, if, of, if, if, the, uh, if, the, if the cleaner <laughs> is compatible with Alexa and Alexa is compatible <laughs> with Control 4, it probably could do yeah, it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> And that's the yeah. beauty so of, like, of the control for application. Say that word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I remember I was talking with John and um, the whole, I won't say the name, and uh, Google Home um, was, was coming out with all the voice commands. And uh, we already had control for in our homes. And I was like, John, can we, can we integrate that? Can we add this? Can I simply go to my local store and buy an Echo for 50 mm -hmm. bucks at the time? and just add it and we'll integrate. He said, yeah. And th that's something where if you go to any other platform, obviously Control 4 has competitors. Um, if you go to uh, any other platform and you ask that, I mean, a lot of times they're gonna say, no, we can't integrate yet. And I, I just remember hearing that. And that's why we love that as the core because technology changes, you can't keep up with it. And so yeah. that way it gives the ability to when things change, when being the keyword, not if, <laughs> It's, it's great to, to adapt. Yeah, well, I think, I think people forget that we're dealing with software at the end of the day, right? and software changes and needs to be upgraded because it is technology. How easy is it to upgrade when there is an upgrade, John? Well, that's what I was gonna say. When, when Hayden and I had the conversation and, and uh, we, were, we were pulling things together in the model home and he's like, hey, can we integrate Alexa? Yeah, the answer is yes. And what, what made it so great, it was, it didn't, it wasn't a whole lot of work. It was, it was probably 10 or 15 minutes, a few pieces, parts, and, and we were away and running. And then it's, it's more of what else do you want to do? You know, it's the, the thing with control Four that I like, and that the answer is yes. What's the question? I mean, there, there's not, there's, there's not a lot that can't be accomplished, but there's also that whole part of just because you can doesn't mean you should, you know, there's, you, you have to be responsible and that's where it comes on me. I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to try to do something, I need to make sure one, it's safe Two, that it's, it's really useful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had, yeah. I had a client one time who, what he wanted was a red button and, and this red button had a sign above it that said, don't press the red button. And the, the whole idea behind it was if somebody tells you not to do something, you're going to do it. Well, we created this elaborate sequence. When you hit this red button, 
that all the lights in the house went out. We recorded, you know, this voice thing that said, now you've done it. I told you to press the red button and you pressed it anyway. And then we got lights flickering and flashing and we had a smoke machine go off and a dance lights. And then the very end of it, the song, uh, somebody called 911. And music came on and it was a, the whole room turned into a disco. So the, Oh, I, I love that. <laughs> don't press the red button unless you're ready to party. That's so cool. You know, one of the things that I think is so important with smart home automation, or one of the, I think it's probably the most useful thing, and it's probably the reason why most people love it, is that you can automate systems that you would have had to do repetitively day in and day out. Like, for example, I know Control 4 has like the good night uh, button or the wake up good morning button. And I think those, those types of things are absolutely amazing. Um, can you tell, and you know, I know you call them scenes, right? Um, can you tell us a little bit, Catherine, about some of those? Like, tell us about Good Night, because that, that's my favorite one. <laughs> good Night's my favorite as well. Um, so I have voice command in my house. And when I say I'm going, I tell her that I'm going to bed and it lights the path <laughs> up to my bedroom and it turns off all the other, uh, the lights in the house, it sets the thermostat to what I like when I like to go to sleep. It double checks and makes sure the door's locked and the garage door is closed. And then I'm in my room. And then I have a townhouse, so it's three stories. So it gives me peace of mind because I know I can tell the lights are off on the first floor. And normally I'm the kind of person to be like, did I turn the lights off? I don't know. Yes. And I would always want to go check. So now I know that that's happened or I can check on my phone and look and know for sure. So the good night feature is fantastic. Um, everyone else's favorite feature too is the I'm leaving the house, the away button or the home button so that you can have it programmed to take care of everything in your house. When you walk out the door, it's one button you press and you know everything's where you want it to be. The shades are lower, the lights are off, whatever it is. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And you know, how, how because people get intimidated, you know, oh, I'm gonna get this automation system and whatever, and there's going to be software updates. How easy is it to, to update software? When we do it all remotely now. I mm -hmm. find it very easy. I've had to do it on my own a couple of times. And if I have a problem, I can just call John and they can, like he said, you can log in from anywhere. And I think now that you, John, can't you even check my internet to tell me if I'm, my internet's connected or something's disconnected that way? Yeah. But yeah, but with the artificial intelligence and artificial um, augmented reality and artificial intelligence it's just every day is changing 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 for the better but your hardware is beautiful too the remote controls that come with control four um that one yeah hey, is that the neo remote yeah. <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah. talk to us about the neo remote touch screen and all of that and um, sure. It's well, it's a touch screen and hard buttons, but it can control anything in your house. And it is, it's actually really thin. It's really pretty. I just dropped it. Uh, and when you talk about how technology has changed a little bit, uh, and John talks about installation and adding things later, this piece is actually one of the first ones that's come out where John doesn't even have to go out to your house and do the installation. He can send it to you and you can log into the internet and it kind of does itself for you. Uh, and it does automatically update itself as well. So technology is mm -hmm. moving and changing. So the experience that I think people had five, 10 years ago with home automation isn't the same experience they have today. Awesome. It is intimidating when you start the process of speakers, video. I mean, but it could sound, the cost can sound alarming, but that's why John is there to control the budget and get the pre-wiring done. When you get the pre-wiring done, that saves you money in the long run. Um, and also having a scalable system, you end up saving money in the long run. Yeah, I mean, some of the benefits of having, uh, when we talk about pre-wiring, is to do it when the walls are open, when you're just starting to build your home. You know, mm -hmm. uh, integrator like John is, and, and, you know, interior designer is very beneficial to have in the conversation when you're even building a home. I mean, we've heard stories, Risa and I, because we deal with home integrators all day, tell us that, you know, they've encountered builders. This wouldn't happen to you at Bob Webb Homes, but they are builders out there that, you know, build like, you know, 8,000 square feet homes 
and they don't build a closet for the equipment. <laughs> so the integrator gets in there at some point, and he's like, where am I putting this? And they have to build a wall or they have to like, you know, figure out where they're gonna put this equipment. That's or called me for heard, custom furniture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hide it, right? Or you, you've heard, you know, we've heard stories, you know, like, okay, I paid over a million dollars for this home and it doesn't even have whole home audio. Right, right. So there was no pre-wiring done or not much. And it's kind of a shame because, yeah, you know, I'm sure you can, you, not I'm sure, I know you can retrofit a home at, with all of this after, but the, there is a cost of bringing the walls down and, you know, putting the wires in. Um, so there's a, there's a question in the chat actually about this. Oh. So I think it would be a good time to bring it up. Somebody asked how difficult is it to install a control force system in an existing home. So if it's going in and doing a retro, John, it's a good John. question for you. Yeah, it, it, to 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 retrofit a control force system into the home, it, it's it's not that difficult. Um, and the 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 biggest the biggest challenge is making sure that we have network where we need it. Um, yeah, they 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 do have a wireless capability, uh, but we're we're very very firm on a, having a hardwired connection to it, because it is the, the the core of the home, and with technology being the way it is, I mean we're we're able to to fit it in pretty easily. It, it's right. not it's not a huge challenge. Yeah, I think the 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 important uh, words you use just you just said there is network, right? So. Yeah. You know, we know all our devices are coming Wi-Fi these days and people have this perception that, you know, they can just connect everything. Talk a little bit, John, about what happens to a system if it's not properly or, or devices, actually, if it's not built on a well, infrastructure. Yeah, so it, a network is, a network's like a super highway system, okay? If you're if you're on the freeway and you're, you're going around and you're on a four lane highway and there's all kinds of cars around you, you're able to move in and out of that traffic fairly easy. Um, that is what it's like to be on a wired network. When, you, when everything's wired, you have the fastest throughput, you have the, the, the most ability and you, you can move around traffic. Wireless on the other hand, even though it's getting better, is is like a two lane highway and in some cases maybe a three lane when you get that center turn lane where you're you can only go as fast as the slowest car in the line so what we try to do in the way that we try to build our networks is we try to get everything off of the wireless because the more things that we get onto the wire network that's the super highway that's got four lanes of traffic going both ways the the faster your wireless is going to be because then there's less devices that are going to try to ride on that. Um, right. Yeah, there's net there's mesh networks that are out there today that that do a great job in an apartment and, and things of that sort. But when it comes to well, we've all experienced it just a larger when, home. Yeah, when when you're trying Far. to zoom call and your Wi-Fi is not quite good enough. So you know, you have to move or shift or or, or twist. The networks that we installed will will give you that throughput, give you that ability, make sure that that you can you can function in your life, and it also makes sure that all the other things connected to it work properly. Yeah, and especially if you live on large property too. You know, I used to live on five acres, and my wife and I wouldn't work when I was on the other side of the prop property. Um, yeah. and, you know, you can't control anything after that because you can't get the signal. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the key is making sure that, yeah. you, that you can stay connected. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we, as you said, we have to leave room, right. For, for the um, things that we can hardwire, like our phones and our tablets and, you know, our smart TVs and things like that. Right. So what are the key things that you would hardwire for? Um, televisions first and foremost. Um, Audio video streaming. Audio, video, when you say streaming. television. Yeah, uh, it makes sure all the audio, the video, the streaming is all hardwired. Um, uh, your printer, yes, they. You being able to print to it wirelessly is important. It being hardlined to the network is essential. 
because that is what's going to give you the most reliable connection to it. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, there's so many things connected to the, to the network anymore. Yeah. I mean, I mean if you're doing like home theater, lighting, wine, um, you know, shade, your projection shade. screen. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, a blind. yeah, a lot of motorized shades are operated on batteries, but if you're like me and you have these, you know, tall windows high up, who's going up there to change batteries once a year? <laughs> Nobody, you know, just even hire a guy to put, you know, one of those big ladders up there. It's going to cost me a fortune. So, you know, it's, it's pre-wiring, right. For something like that. And yeah. These types of conversations, if the home builder, when they're building a home, can have with an integrator who has the knowledge. I know, John, you keep up a lot on what's going on with latest and greatest, um, you know, control for, make sure of that. You also attend a lot of uh, trade shows. You do a lot of certifications. Your installers go through all this. So, um, you know, having this team together when you're beginning a project is, is, is very important. And Danny, I know you're so, you know, up on, on the connection between interior design and technology. I know, can you, I know you recently earlier this year went to a trade show and, and, you know, got some really good information. Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, KBIS. Um, we are in the world of connection. Everything is becoming connected. Uh, and we're in a world where we're talking to the walls and the walls are beginning to talk back to us. So it's, um, we've seen, um, you're going to be able to talk to your microwave and tell it that make yourself popcorn. And then you're going to be able to say, it's going to tell you the popcorn's done. And you're going to be able to tell the microwave that, Hey, the popcorn is a little bit burnt this time. Can you do it less next time? Okay, sure. The microwave is going to talk back to you, but we're seeing it with refrigerators, dishwashers. I don't know why you would need a washer and dryer to have Wi-Fi, but apparently they do too. Um, <laughs> Because we want to say, turn on the dishwasher, and we want it to go. Yeah. <laughs> I have the dishwasher. I'm like, the, dish, the trash can has Wi-Fi these days. Everything is just, well, we're in a wired world, a Wi-Fi world. Can I tell the dishwasher to empty itself, too? I wish. <laughs> yeah. Next year. Hey, Lisa, I mean, this is off topic, but do you remember when we went to CES and we saw the folding, um, the clothing, the folding machine to fold there was, clothing? There was a machine that you could take all the laundry straight out of your wash, your dryer, put it in, and it would fold your laundry and neatly stack it. We were like, we need that. Yes, I did see that. <laughs> but um, Hayden, you know, I I have a question. So about the investment, right? You know, home automation is a big investment. How do, how do you think clients feel about um, investing in their home with home automation? Is that helping to even sell, as a, from a builder perspective, helping sell your home, having this level of smart home automation in it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that uh, in this day and age, we are used to immediate responses. We are used to great customer service. We are used to, I mean, I'm going to say it, being a little bit lazy. And that's where it's, it's huge. You want to have that in every aspect of your life. And if any aspect of your life doesn't have it, it's probably going to have it soon. Um, and that's just, again, kind of what, what we're doing nowadays. And so that's where a lot of times clients will come and come to me and say that they, they want to do the whole house um, automated. And I'm like, okay, great. What does that mean? And a lot of times they think, well, you know, blinds, I've seen a commercial for the doors <laughs> and that's it, right? And it's like, no, that you can do so much more. And obviously, yeah. again, you tailor it to what you need, but it's also tailored to a budget. Um, I know we talked about a, a million dollar plus home. That's great. I mean, a million dollars is a lot of money, but let's be honest, a lot of us don't have a million dollars to spend on a home or home automation. And so that's where you can really be efficient on what you want and you can choose what you're paying for now versus later. And as, as long as you have that hardwired in up front it is so important because again, you can just simply add, I mean, just like a shopping cart, you can just add that, add this later um, and, and it'll work. So it's definitely important. Um, it's, it's part of my spiel, I guess I'll say um, at the beginning and it's never too early to bring in really anybody on this team right now, a uh, John, exactly. Catherine, Danny, because there's so many moving parts and, and that example of, 
after you move in and you know john has called and said hey can we do something in this master closet it's like well it wasn't set up for that um, we can do it it's just a little bit more challenging it'd be way easier if you did it ahead of time and i, I think people don't realize that how many moving parts are involved and worst case you just have somebody involved on the project that knows what they're talking about so get them involved exactly. as early as you possibly can do you think there's a certain level of pricing home where the client expects a certain level of smart home automation in it? Is I don't it think so. Five hundred thousand? Is it at eight hundred thousand? I think that million? everybody wants, wants some smart home, and and they kind of expect it to some degree. Um, and obviously, we we all have a big wish list, and and there's a big difference between a wish list and reality. And the budget. I, 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 <laughs> yes, exactly. So I think years ago, it was a big big gap between I want this, but I have a budget for this, and now it's just it's definitely closing in, um, and it's really talking and getting to know the client. Hayden, tell me if this formula is correct for budget wise. If you have a million dollar home, what I always tell my clients, 33% of the price of your home should be spent on furniture, fixtures, finishes, and equipment. So if you're taking that $1 million home, you need to furnish it and finish it with things so that out of that $1 million, if you're hiring an interior designer or you need all new furniture and you need John, you're gonna be looking around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that service is that still an equation is that still a relevant equation this is what we've been we this was 2014 we've been um using that equation but it's usually 33 percent of the budget is that, so i mean obviously there, there's ideally what people want um and again there, there's reality i think that that is very close um everybody's different I have clients yeah. that if you would say 10% uh, of that is dedicated to furniture, they would be happy. I have, I have some clients that need 50%, you know? And so that- hey, send those my name, send those my way, 50%. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've got your card, Danny, don't worry. I'll send you the 10%. <laughs> <laughs> the, you guys are so great. I love talking to you. So, you know, um, I, I don't want to leave without talking about voice because voice, I think, is becoming more and more important. And especially when we're thinking about aging in place. I know, John, we talked a little bit earlier uh, a few days ago about aging in place and some of the things that you can do um, for seniors. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the part of part of control four that that makes it extremely versatile um, is it, it comes back to the intelligence of the home um, you know smart home is great and and you can get smart home things at, at a lot of different places but getting intelligence into the home is is the part that makes it makes it more useful and more 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 viable um, uh, an example would be you know if if you your, your parents want to, they don't want to go into assisted living or in nursing homes, not a, not a great name, but they, they don't, you don't want them to, to do that. You want them to, to have life on their terms. So, but you want to make sure that, that they're taking their medicine on time, that they're getting out of bed, that, that they're not just, you know, that, that if there's something wrong, you know, you can be alerted. Well, with, with the technology that we have with control four and, and the, the pieces and parts that are that are at our disposal, we can put a contact sensor on the medicine cabinet and make sure that that they've opened it up to get their medicine out. Um, if they if they haven't gotten out of bed, or they there's no motion in the room for the bedroom, we can we can alert you on those things. Maybe you might want to just make a phone call and and check in on mom at that point in time. Yeah, there's, I think I think also things like you know the the option and good wake up option to make sure a house is shut down because I mean I'm I'm not a senior yet but <laughs> my senior moments and it's like as Catherine says like you know she, you you like this get whole to time I've like, been this whole time I've been like, thinking about I the clapper to, like close the garage doors <laughs> you know like you think like you forget things right so I mean I I think you know that that's the beauty yeah. of automation is that you could 
make life easier. So for aging in place and seniors, they can use their voice and say, hey, good night and shut the house down and, you know, things that they might forget. Um, and, and also having to go around pulling blinds down. I mean, who wants to, you know, you remember we used to go around, you know, um, with the little twisties. Going to string yeah. for the, for the uh, shades, I mean, up and down. My first house, I had all these windows and be like, every night, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> So, so smart. When I started leaving half half of them up. I was like, I'm not doing this. I don't care who sees us. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think some of the big takeaways that we're getting here is that smart home automation is really bringing convenience, right? It's making life yeah. easy for for everybody with at the touch of a button on the the Neo remote from Control Four or from your iPhone. You can you know make things happen in your house. And I think mm -hmm. also security, you know, like Catherine, what you were saying, not having to go downstairs to the first floor from the third, or when you left the house, did I, you know, turn the coffee maker off or did I lock the door? Or, I mean, I think it's just this amazing comfort and experience that, you know, this smart automation is bringing to, to people's lives and adding value now. And also happiness. I mean, let's talk about the entertainment part portion of it. You know, I mean, John alluded to a little bit about that. Uh, you know, when he talked about the guy with the button and turning the whole house into a party house. <laughs> well, one of the things that, that we do or that we that we've done at, at all of the model homes with with Bob Webb is we've integrated the security system with the house. So, you know, because there's multiple agents coming in and out of, of the homes. And so when they when they disarm the security system, the house comes alive. Music starts playing. The TVs turn on the, the shades come up. And there's a lot of houses or a lot of lights in these houses. So, I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> going around and flipping the switches and doing all of this. So now when it's all done, all they do is arm the alarm. The TV shut down, the blinds close, the lights turn off. Everything goes back to the natural state. The That's temperature can be controlled as well. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be physically in the home or near the home to have access to that. I, I remember, um, I mean, I was on vacation many states away and, and a client had texted me said, hey, can I go through your house? You know, the show home, obviously it's a different application for what I'm doing, but um, maybe you have a, a dog sitter or whatever and you're in Florida. Um, you say, yeah, I got it. I got my phone. Just going to click the, the on button. Everything turns on. You're good to go. You can see it. You got the security. You have the peace of mind. And then people leave. All right, I'm just gonna hit it again. And easy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Amazing. So, I think you know it's time to start to wrap up the conversation. I'm just gonna go to the chat because we have one more question that we didn't get to yet. Um, the question is, and how does a lighting system integrate with smart home automation? And I feel like this could be for Catherine and John together if you want to. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, there's so many things that light that you can do with lighting control to enhance your living experience. I think there's a couple of things I'll talk, I'll say, and then John can take it. But uh, the things I think about are safety. So when I come home and I'm alone, uh, you know, being able to light the house and be able to see everything with the push of one button is really nice for me. Um, and then I think for safety and security, there's things that it can do, like it can integrate with your alarm system. If your burglar alarm goes off, your fire alarm, uh, it can make all the lights in the house flash at the same time. So emergency services knows where they're going. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do uh, in the house to, to enhance it with lighting control. John? Yeah, the, the, the integration of, of intelligent technology or you know, control for with, with lighting it's limitless. I mean, what do you want it to do? What is important to you? I mean, it's, it's your castle, your rules. You know, it, it's, that's what, that's what it gives you. It gives you, it gives you control, not, you know, not the other way around. Great. Well, I think that's a, a really nice way to kind of wrap up our conversation. Um, I'd love to thank you, our panel of experts for joining us. And I'd really, you know, Danny and Hayden, it's really refreshing. Welcome. It's really refreshing to see a builder and a designer really embracing technology. So, you know, kudos to you guys for that. And, you know, this really is the dream team. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly um, so that everybody can see the individual panel's contact information. So if you have any questions at home, if you'd like to reach out to anybody and ask them a question, uh, 
directly, you can certainly do so. So I'm gonna share that. So if you'd like to reach out, feel free. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. There you go. Yes. Awesome. So, yeah, well, thank you everybody for joining us today. I, I hope you- You're had welcome really enjoyed the, the conversation and definitely stay tuned for the next Genesis Audio Tech and Design conversation coming to you in December. So thank you guys. Thank you Good night. Thank you everyone. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thanks Danny. Bye. Enjoy Danny. You're welcome. Thanks guys. Bye.